All right, welcome back. Today we are on page 389. We're going to be starting lesson two of module two, topic three. All right, and it's called approaching infinity. And our learning goals today, what we're going to talk about is the graphical behavior of rational functions. Remember, rational functions um, are polynomial divided by a polynomial, right? So we, our basic one was this. We looked at like a power function last time. We had one that looked like that, right? And the power of the even ones looked like this, okay? We're gonna see how to translate these, move them around a little bit, have different um, asymptotes and things like that. So before we continue, I wanna talk about a little review of our transformations, all right? So this is a whole lot of stuff, but I wanna talk about, I wanna simplify this. I'm gonna talk just today about the following. C and D, okay? These are the ones we're gonna mainly talk about today. So remember, any translation, you did this in Matthew in uh, quarter one, we talked about this, all right? So remember, anything inside a function is horizontal, all right? So it shifts things left or right, and it's always opposite of what I think. So if that C value is seven, X minus seven, that is not minus seven or left seven, it's actually gonna to go to the right seven, it's opposite. This D value out here then is vertical and it is exactly what we think. So if it says plus four, I'm gonna go up four. If it says minus two, I'm gonna go down two, all right? So let's go over here to page 391 and take a look. Before we do, let's think about what determines a vertical asymptote. Well, we kind of realized this last time. We had one over x, and that gave us an asymptote at x is zero, all right? Because we're not allowed to divide by zero. So what develops these asymptotes here, that's when the denominator equals zero. So anytime the denominator equals zero, we could have a vertical asymptote. So that says, could we have more than one vertical asymptote? Well, yeah, I guess, I mean, what if we had more than one way to equal zero on the bottom? Then yes, we could have more than one vertical asymptote. And we're gonna talk about those in a little bit today, all right? Okay, so let's remember, we have our basic, our very first rational, graph right here. That's what we came up with last time. All right. And so this one says, I want to take that function, but I want to add five to it. So that means that's a D value. And we talked about that. Anything outside the function is exactly what it appears and it's always vertical. So it's going to go up five. So one, two, three, four, five. Now I take this, I had an asymptote here. I'm going to make an asymptote. I'm going to make it a dotted line. So we know that that's our asymptote. My asymptote here never shifted so i'm still gonna have an asymptote here nothing else changed so all that we did was we moved up our graph five units our graph stayed basically the same right it just shifted up well what's here this is inside the function it's inside the parentheses that means i have to go left five one two three four five let's have our vertical asymptote there it shifted five units to the right. Like if we think about it, this would be that function, right? X plus five. And then we know X could not be negative five because that would make that zero. Thus, our vertical asymptote at negative five. Now, did we shift up or down? No, we didn't shift up or down at all. So we still have our horizontal asymptote there. And our graph remains basically the same after we shifted it. Okay, hope you understand that. All right, here we are on page 393, and what it wants us to do is actually write a rational function that matches the given characteristics, and then we're gonna sketch it. All right, so let's do A and B here. All right, so it says there's a vertical asymptote at X equals two. Well, if it's at X equals two, what would that, I have to subtract, and my factor would be X minus two, right? And that goes on the bottom, because we already talked about that wherever the denominator equals zero, we're going to have an asymptote. All right, so that's vertical asymptotes. Okay, so we know that. 
Now it says also we need a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Well, generally, it's at y equals 0. So we went up 1, right? So when we translate up or down, we need to add that on at the end. So I'm not going to add it in here because this is inside the function. I'm going to add it on at the end outside the function. So now I have, if you think about it, a vertical shift up 1. So my horizontal asymptote is at 1. This is like a shift right 2. So my vertical asymptote is at 2. And then we can draw our graph. Well, sketch it. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? All right, let's take a look at B. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and x equals negative 5. So we know that in our rational function, we cannot let those values be equal there. So I need that to be x minus 1, because if I plug a 1 in, 1 minus 1 is 0. Can't divide by 0. And x plus 5, because if I plug negative 5 in, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So let's draw those on our graph. So here's one vertical asymptote, and here is our other vertical asymptote, okay? And we also have a horizontal asymptote at negative 3. Remember, that's a shift up and down that goes on the outside, so we're going to do down 3. And it's going to look like that, okay? All right, so now this graph is going to look a lot like this. Inside here, we're going to have a parabola looking shape and then out here. Okay? And it kind of looks like, if you think about it, we had talked about, right, when we had a power function of 2, that you can see that too. We have two x's, right? You can see that. But this division here in the middle creates this extra piece. Okay? All right. So what I want you to do is look at those, use those. And I want you to try and graph C and D. Now, this is the opposite, all right? They're going to give you this transformation, all right? They give you the starting one and try and transform it, all right? Pause the video and try those on your own. All right, so our function is going to have a shift of minus 2. So x minus 2, that's actually going to go to the right. So our asymptote would be at x equals 2. And it's going to go down 4, so minus 4 on the outside. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be at negative 4, okay? On this one, it just says it shifts up and it shifts left. You could have shifted it any number of spaces. I said it shifted up 2. That's up 2. And then I said it went to the left one, so my asymptote would be at x equals negative 1 here, all right? But when I write that in my graph, remember, I have to do the opposite of it, so it's x plus 1. All right, let's try some more. All right, let's try and graph this without, without technology. Oh, my goodness. All right, here we go. Well, the first thing I know is there's going to be an asymptote here at negative 2. Uh, or excuse me, at positive 2, right? So at positive 2, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. Great. At negative 4, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. Does my graph shift up or down? No, it's like plus 0, so it really doesn't shift up or down. So I know that when I have these two asymptotes, I'm going to have some values in here. And I know that my horizontal asymptote is still there. And I have values here. And I'm going to have values here. Okay? So let's talk about the asymptotes first. Those are the easiest. So x equals positive 2. That's one of my asymptotes. And x equals negative 4. That would be my other one correct? All right. My y-intercept is when what? x equals 0. So let's plug that in. So 1 over 0 minus 2 is negative 2 times 0 plus 4 is 4. So that's 1 over negative 8. So that would be 1 over negative 8. Very tiny. All right. All right. Domain and range. So basically it's all real numbers except for what? 2 and negative 4. So we have to, I'm going to do it in intervals. So I'm going to say from negative infinity all the way to negative 4. But we're not going to include that. If it's a bracket, it's included. 
and then we're going to go from negative 4 to positive 2, and then we're going to go from 2 to infinity. Okay? The range, well, the only break in our range is at 0. So I'm going to say from negative infinity to 0, not including it, and then from 0 to positive infinity. Okay? By not having this bracket at these numbers, it indicates that there is an asymptote there. If I had written it like this, from negative uh, infinity to zero, and include that, that means there's a value at zero and there wouldn't be a vertical asymptote. All right, let's try B. Well, the first thing we have to do is I notice it's not written with factors, so we need to factor. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative eight and add to negative two. So that's x minus four and x plus two, right? I also notice here that it dilates it a little bit by 2, so that's going to change things a little bit, but it's all right. And again, I have plus 0 here. So my range, right off the bat, should I, I know I should have a horizontal asymptote at 0, and that's the only one. So my range will still be from negative infinity to 0, and from 0 to infinity. All right, let's take a look. So x minus 4, so that's going to be plus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then when x is plus, x plus 2, that's going to be a negative 2 because it's the opposite. Okay. Now the dilation, remember when we have a dilation, it kind of uh, comes away from this corner a little bit. Instead of hugging the asymptotes, it kind of pulls away from it. It grows a little bit faster. Okay, so this one's going to grow a little bit faster. All right, great. So let's look at our domain. So it goes from negative infinity to right here, our first asymptote, which is at negative 2. So negative infinity to negative 2. And then we go from negative 2 to positive 4. And then we go from 4 to infinity. Our asymptotes, we know one's at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 4. Our y-intercept is when x is 0, so let's do that. So that's going to be 2 over 0 squared is 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 8. So 0 plus 0 minus 8. And that's going to change into negative 1 fourth. See, you can see here that 2 right there, that grows it away a little bit, right? Our last y-intercept didn't have that, and it, we had the same numbers. It was 1 eighth, negative 1 eighth. This is now growing a little bit further. I know that these numbers don't seem that big, but it's a little bit. All right, I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, so the first thing I did was factor it. Two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 3 are negative 5 and 2. So I had a negative 2, x equals negative 2 is one of my vertical asymptotes, and the other one is at 5. And then graphed it. My horizontal asymptote did not change. All right, graphed it up there. You can see my domain from negative infinity to negative 2, from negative 2 to 5, and from 5 to infinity. And our range, of course, because it didn't change at all, is the same. Over here for my y-intercept, I plugged in 0. I plugged it into the original, but it doesn't matter. You can plug it in either one. And these cancel. I get 1 over negative 10. All right, let's kind of, let's, uh, we're going to analyze this and we're just going to find the vertical asymptotes. We're not going to graph it. We're just going to find them. It should be pretty easy, right? Like, all right. So remember, the vertical asymptote is when the bottom would equal zero. So 7x minus 35 equals zero. So 7x equals 35. I added 35, divide by 7, and x would be 5. That would be my vertical asymptote there. Let's do D because you know, it's factoring. I have a leading coefficient, so I need two numbers that multiply to 8. Remember, whenever I have a leading coefficient, I have to multiply first times last and add to 9. I like the box method. I don't know how you like to factor when there is a leading coefficient. I put the first answer in the first box, the last one in the last box, and then two new numbers here. So 8 times 1 multiplies to 8 and adds to 9. So I go this way, and I can take out a factor of 4. Here, I can take a factor of x out. When I go up this way, I can take a factor of 2x out. And here, I can only take a 1 out. So that means, if factored, it's going to be x plus 4 
and 2x plus 1. So this would be pretty easy. x is negative 4 would be my asymptote. This one, subtract 1 and divide by 2. That would be my asymptote. Okay? Uh, let's see here. Um, F. What's the problem with F? There is no, right? Like x squared plus 2 equals 0, x squared equals negative 2, and we can't take the square. So there actually would be no vertical asymptotes here. All right? That's an interesting one, right? So I want you to try E and G. Try them on your own. All right, E and G, I realize they wrote them twice in your book for some reason. So the first thing I did, I noticed was difference of squares. So that's x squared and x squared, negative 1 and positive 1. The first one, x squared minus 1, is then difference of squares, x minus 1 and x plus 1. But x squared plus 1, that's not a difference of squares. It's a sum of squares, and we can't break that down, so it stays. So then my vertical asymptotes would be x equals 1 for this one and x equals negative 1 for that one. Down here, much easier, right? X equals negative 2 and X equals positive 5. That one was, uh, I think, you know, pr pretty easy. All right. Hopefully you understand better how these graphs work a little bit um, and uh, have no problem with your classwork. Good luck to you on that. And, and again, make sure you're asking questions. Ask kids. Kids know a lot of things. Ask your teachers. Teachers know a lot of things. We're all here. We want to help you learn. All right. Have good, uh, good luck.